Hi, Jessica, or whoever's watching this. Um, it's it's Rachel Esdale here. Um, I decided to make this video, and I will get an address to send it to. Um, because I can't put this on the forum, but, um, I think it, um, it'll be good to let you know what I was thinking for this, uh, story. Like I said in my email, it's called The Sex Tape. And what it is, basically, is it starts on prom night where where this girl where this girl uh, named Swiss um, is she's supposed to get a ride with a so-called friend um, but her and the other girls she's supposed to get a ride with are not really friends um, but her mother begs her um, to um, to uh, ride with this uh, ride with this person to the prom because her and her mother don't have a car and this person does have a car and neither of them have dates so um, so she agrees to ride with this quote unquote friend this neighbor to the prom. Uh, when she gets into the car, when Swiss gets into the car, um, they, the neighbor says, can we stop for a moment? I need to get something from somebody's house. And uh, Swiss is like, okay, we can stop for a moment. And so they stop at this other girl's house, and this, and before they know it, this other girl, um, the one that they stop to pick up, is the girlfriend, is the partner, sorry, of the name. So they start making out <laughs> and Squiz is in the back of the car going uh okay well going okay like they slowly start making out you know uh touch of the arm or whatever and eventually it goes into a full um lesbian makeout session and Swiss is like, oh my god, here I am in the back of the car while, while these two girls are going at it. And when she gets there, um, it, when she gets to the hotel that they're holding this prom at, um, the, the, the girl and her girlfriend and her partner and her date, let's say, go off somewhere and Swiss is just there alone, like total, totally dateless. And the reason why she's called Swiss is because, you know how sometimes in high school, there are cliques like the jocks, the cheerleaders, the nerds, whatever. Uh, she's kind of like in the middle. She's not a jock, not a cheerleader, not a nerd, not part of any group. So they they call they started calling her in elementary school uh, Swiss because of Swiss. Switzerland, like, neutral territory. So, here Swiss is, this prom, and everybody's got a date except her. So, we 
go over, we move over to Darren, which is uh, a quarterback. I should say Swiss is ca- ca- Caucasian with with brown hair. Not, not excuse the word, not unattractive, but not like knockout gorgeous. She's okay looking, but she's kind of, um, even in her look, she's kind of, um, not commercially gorgeous, but she's not a slouch in the looks department either. So, so then we switch over to Darren. Darren is, um, the quarterback. He's biracial with curly hair. Um, his mother is a white Irish woman, and his father is a black man from a big city. If I wanted to be Canadian, I would say Toronto. If it's going to be uh, American, I would say New York with some metropolitan city, and he's like a typical uh, football quarterback, tall, built, uh, muscular, and he's dating uh, a cheerleader, and the cheerleader, and uh, that night he has what what people don't know about him is he's a secret romantic. He's a secret romantic. And uh, so, and he saw, when he, like, when he was about 10, he, not 10, let's say 13, uh, and he saw uh, uh, when when Harry met, met Sally, like it kind of intrigued him. So he's he's here we go. He's um, a buff guy who loves ro- romantic movies and all that stuff, and he's always wanted to be uh, the hero, like one of those guys in those romance uh, movies. And on the other side of him, he he's, he's a really good football player. Like, really good. Um, and college scouts are chasing him, and he's popular. So he on this prom night, he has a plan to, uh, typical prom night, to sleep with his girlfriend for the first time, to lose his virginity, so, so he has all of this, and all of this planned, and romantic hotel room rented, and all that stuff, anyway, he goes, he goes into, he hears something like her, his girlfriend goes um, to fix her face, and she's like, "Baby, I'll be right back." And and, um, and then he, she's and then he and then he realizes, and uh, Darren realizes that that his girlfriend. The cheerleader has been gone a while, so he goes to check on her in the bathroom. So, in the bathroom, like, he knocks on the door. He's like, Kayla, are you all right? And then no answer, and then, and then he knocks again. Kayla, are you all right? So... Like, he looks around, he wants to make sure that she's okay, and he doesn't really go, he doesn't really want to go into the girl's bathroom, 
but but there's no one around and she wants to make sure that she's okay. And then when he steps into the girl's bathroom, he hears someone moaning and it sounds like Kayla. And he hears someone groaning, like making sex noises. And and it's uh, and he goes closer to the stall, and he's like, oh, somebody's getting the party start early, but, and he realizes that it's Kayla, and he opens the stall door, and it's Kayla with the competing high school quarterback like they're at a they're at, at like rival high schools and the competing quarterback is now inside of Kayla and Kayla's making sex noises and the guy is inside of her Pumping like crazy, and like, and like, th- they're just into each other. And then he, f- and then in his mind, Darren remembers because in a football game, uh, um, the the quarterback from the rival school was about to um, was about to uh, was about to fumble and then and then um, Darren uh, tackled him and took the ball away from him and then and then ran across the the goal line to score to score the points and win the game. And the guy said, "I'll I'll get you, I'll get you." And now there they are in the bathrooms. There Darren is in the in the bathroom stall, watching the other quarterback uh, have sex with his girlfriend on his prom night, the very night he was going to give his virginity to her. And then, to make things worse, uh, uh, Darren comes out Mad as anything. He's so mad because he he spent money on this. He's been dreaming about this for years because he he thinks he really loves her. But um, he's been really mad. And to make things work worse, she seems to have no remorse. He confronts her about it. He says, what the hell's going on? Why are you screwing uh, him of all people? He's like, well, he's he's got millions of dollars, and I would rather be um, be, be with him than, a, than a whatever. She says really mean things. They have words. And so, to make it worse, now that that Darren knows what what's going on between his girlfriend and the quarterback, they have no shame. They're gyrating, they're sexy dancing, they're, you know, on the dance floor. Like, it looks like they're dry humping. And and 
there and is like, oh, God, I've got to get out of here. So he leaves uh, the, the prom, and Swiss is outside um, trying to get... Um, Swiss was bored, and she's outside wanting to just go home. Uh, usually for her, um, being, uh, being in between or having no group she belongs to, usually it works, and usually she can make people laugh, and they just forget about it, forget about the fact that she is kind of, um, a part of no group or whatever, She's friends with everybody, but now everybody has their date, everybody has their group, and she's just alone. And the person she came with, now she can't get her on the phone. So anyway, the two of them, the two, both Darren and Swiss start talking because they're in some of the same classes. They're both, like, 17 and a half, and they start talking. They, they, first of all, they talk about, like, little stuff, like, um, your, their classes, and certain people in school, yeah, that, that guy's, a jerk and whatever, and, um, and then, like, it get, and then they start, like, walking together, and just walking around the outside of the hotel, because it's summer, they start walking, and then just talking, and you know, when you don't know someone, it makes it easier to disclose um, kind of who you are because you don't know them and you don't think you're going to see them again. So that's what happens. So they start talking with small talk and then the small talk gets deeper and deeper and deeper and then they start talking. So he starts talking about um, the deepest thing he goes is about um, being biracial and uh, how in elementary school he didn't he didn't fit in with the black kids or he didn't fit in with the white kids he was just just kind of neutral and although she's not biracial she's white Swiss. Swiss can kind of relate to that because she was not a nerd. She was not um, anything. She was just uh, neutral. She didn't belong to any group. She didn't belong to anything, any specific group. And the only thing she had going for her was the fact she could make people laugh with all the voices she could do. And he talks about, he talks about not really, like, liking football, but not loving football. She says, oh, really? And she's like, but you're so good. I've seen you on the field. He's like, that's just the August in me. I'm, I have to be good at, like, everything I do. If I'm not, what's what's the point in doing it? And then, like, and she, he says, um, he says, can I tell you something? He says, I'm scared about next year. He says, I'm scared because I like football, but I don't love it. But my, but my dad... He wanted to play football, and but he was out 
with a knee injury and couldn't play again. And um, and now when he had me and 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 saw that I had talent, he kind of strongly encouraged me to play football, and I got good at it. Although I I never really loved the game. Uh, I liked it, but I never really liked the game. I never really loved the game the way you should. He's like, she's like, well, why don't you tell your dad? He's like, well, I don't want to disappoint him. But what if what if I get scouted to a major college team and then I don't like it, but I'm good at it? Do I spend my life um, doing something I don't, I don't love because I'm good at it? And he's like, I'm, I'm scared. And then she's like, uh, he, she's like, at least you have a pass. I, I, I don't really have a pass. I don't really know what I want to do. There, there are college applications that I have yet to fill out. There are college books on the table that I have yet to fill out. My she's like Swiss is not just my name it's been my life it's like it's easier to stand in the middle and not make a choice and now I have now I have on my table um, so many college applications and um, I haven't filled out one yet because I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm good at. The only thing I'm good at is making people laugh by all the voices I can do. And he he's like, aren't we a pair? And they, they said, he's like, and eventually, Swiss looks down at her watch, and he's like, whoa, it's getting late. And, and she's like, whoa, it's getting late. And, uh, and then Swiss is like, oh, he, he's like, well, I can take you home. He's like, oh, but wait, I need to stop at the hotel because th there were things that I forgot because I thought K Kayla and I were going to be together tonight, but that's not going to happen. But there were things that I forgot that I need to... Um, that I need to... Uh, go get. He's like, but I can drop you home after that. It's on the way. She's like, oh, fine. Thanks. And then, so, he drives to the hotel. Swiss comes inside because, you know, she doesn't want to wait out in the car. And she says, I'll wait for you here. And he says, okay. And then he goes upstairs to the room to get what he what he left in the room. Um, and then while he's up there, um, while he's up there, she Swiss has to go to the bathroom, and he waits. She waits, she tries to wait, but she really has to go. And then uh, she tells 
the um, receptionist, he's like, look, I'm here with a friend, but I really need to go to the bathroom. Is there one I could use? And, and the person says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we have no bathrooms on this floor. The only bathrooms we have for guests are up in their hotel rooms. And she's like, oh, great. I'm going to have to go and use the bathroom in this hotel room that he planned with another woman. And so what happens is that is that he, she knocks on the door while he's like kind of cleaning up, blowing up candles, all that stuff. He's kind of cleaning up. And she's like, I need to use the bathroom. And then, and then, okay, and she, she uses the bathroom, washes her hands, and then comes out. And then when she, when she comes out, she sees him by the window and they start talking. And because that night they got close, something seems to spark in the air and they end up kissing and kissing and kissing. And then they end up kind of sleeping together. And that moment is so romantic that um, it's kind of a sweet moment. So they end up sleeping together. But she ends up, the next morning, she ends up, she ends up waking up beside him. And she's like, oh no, what did I do? And she, she does the walk of shame. When he, when she, when he tries, and at that moment, he know he knows that she loves him, that he loves her. She's intelligent, she's insightful, she's mature, she's a wonderful person, and, and he knows that he will never meet anyone in his life like her. So what he does is is um, track try and track her down at school. She doesn't want to talk to him. She's like, it's over. Bet- it's over between us. It was one night. It was I was vulnerable. You were feeling vulnerable. Let's not make a big deal out of it. He's like, what do you mean, let's not make a big deal out of it? It is a big deal. I felt something that night, and so did you. And she refuses to talk to him. He tries, but she refuses to talk to him. And he's just like, what do I do? Anyway, he, he moves on and whatever. And that's the end of it. Episode one, the the beginning of episode two. Weeks later, she finds she, she finds out that she's feeling a bit sick. She's like he. She's like, honey. Her mother's like, honey, are you okay? And he and she's like, I'm feeling a bit sick and tired and just run down. I thought it was just a flu, but. Something else is going on. Uh, and she's... And the next scene is she's with her mom and at the drugstore and her mom is picking up something and she's passing by the pregnancy test. Now her mom doesn't know that she slept with Darren, but uh, she's trying to remember if they used the condom and all that stuff with without like because of all that was going on that night, she can't remember 
if they used a condom or whatever. So she's passing the pregnancy test and she picks up three different kinds. It turns out that she is pregnant. And okay, and then after she finds out she's pregnant, she tells her mom. She tells her mom. She's kind of nervous to tell her mom, but she tells her mom. And her mom's like, oh, honey, we'll figure this out. Whatever you want to do, whether you want to adopt or whether you want to keep the baby, we'll figure it out. And like, um, like, like her usual personality, she, she kind of waits until she figures it out. And one day she's like, she, she knows for a certainty that it's going to be hard, it's going to be rough. What she knows of her certainty that she's going to keep her baby, right? So she decides to keep the baby and, you know, all that stuff. And when she goes to tell him that he is pregnant, no, that she is pregnant, um, like he was so depressed of her brush off that he got together with his ex-girlfriend, the girlfriend that cheated on him. She wormed her way back. So when she went to tell him that, that he was pregnant, she said, oh, her his ex-girlfriend kind of brushed her off and said, it was very rude and was like, we're together now. So... And didn't tell him that Swiss uh, wanted to see him. So she she graduates pregnant. She has the baby. And when she has the baby, um, there's one day where she's uh, walking with a stroller. And because... Um, and she's walking with her crying baby past the radio station. And there's a lady that that comes out of the radio station with a huff and said, I will never work for you, for you again. Like a disgruntled employee. And like, and her crying baby, he's like, never work in radio again. So, um, she's walking with her crying son who is, like, um, crying and fussy because it's winter now and the baby's cold and the baby's about two months old at this point. Three months, two months old. Like, let's say a month old at this point, and the baby's cold, and, uh, so she go, she goes to stand, um, in kind of side the radio station, inside the doors, because she, she doesn't have a car, so she decides to stand in a building to get warm and to shush her baby. So when she's standing there, that's when she sees the lady come out. And then and then she has an idea that that lady's a disgruntled employee. And she gets an idea. She lives with her mother. And her mother loves being grandma, but she... She is now 18 and a half, and she wants to move move out of her mother's house with her and her, her son. So, and she looks up at the radio station time, and she's like, they need an employee for the, for the show, 